Welcome to Take 5. Here is your host, Dr. Driver. Welcome to Take 5. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. You know, I look at the news. I'm sure most of you do this. I look at the news and I go, wow, it's getting really bad out there. And I say, Lord, come quickly. How many people say, Lord, come quickly? If I hear an amen through this TV camera, let me go for it. <laughs> Lord, come quickly. But there's so much work to do. The world is in sin. People are running around just disobedient, being crazy, hurting people, killing people. And yet we're wondering, is the Lord really coming? Let me give you some encouragement in this session of Take 5. You know, I read the scriptures, and when I uh, graduated from seminary back in the day, that was in the 90s, <laughs> was a long time, my studies was in eschatology, which is the study of end times. And I'm an end time preacher. And there are, many, there are many preachers out there that focus on preaching about the return of Jesus Christ. I do that, but I also uh, teach the Word of God so that you can have a, a faithful and uh, successful walk with the Lord. But here's what I do know. The Lord is coming. If you're born again, listen to me, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. You'll feel it. The Holy Spirit is telling you He's coming soon. Now, I love reading through the Old Testament and the New Testament telling me that He's coming. You can read the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us in Mark or Matthew, Matthew 24, is my, one of my favorite uh, scripture verses about end times. Matthew, because it starts in the Gospel. Matthew 24, you can read about there will be wars and rumors of war. Jesus talks about this. Here are the signs of the end. You can also read that in Mark chapter 13. Jesus says it under that narrative. These are the synoptic gospels. You can read it in Luke chapter 21. So Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 21. Jesus talks about the end times. The writers of the gospels pen almost verbatim exactly what Jesus says is going to happen in the last days. So we have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But here's what Peter says. We're going to go to the epistle of Peter. This is 2 Peter chapter 3. Let me just read a, a few verses for you. He says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. And that's what I'm trying to do here today. I'm trying to remind you not to give up hope, but to hang in there. He says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this, now here's the important part, knowing this, here we go, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. I hear Christians saying this, or what I would say, profess Christians saying this. Scoffers saying, well, when is he, he going to return? I don't see he's going to come. Look how things are getting bad. My friends, don't surround yourself with people like that. God's word is true. Listen to me. God's word is is true. And he is not slack in his coming. For me, the days go by quick. As Peter even wrote in his epistles, a thousand years is like one day with the Lord. One day is like a thousand years. I get that. But here's what it is for me. It feels like the days are, are cut short. I have to get up in the morning. I have to start my pray, praying and worship of the Lord, read the word, get into my daily schedule, still seeking the Lord, seeing what's going on in the world. But I'm still saying, Lord, it's coming because my spirit, my, my spirit is bearing witness to the Holy Ghost. He's coming again. And because I know he's coming again, listen, to me, I get bumped. I know he's coming. I'm going to live holy. Oh, I'm going to live holy for God. I'm going to take every opportunity to preach his word. I'm going to take every opportunity 
to testify to those who I meet that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's coming again. The world may lose hope. The world may say, oh, no, no, things are getting worse. Maybe our politicians can, can save us. Uh-uh. Maybe legislation can control this craziness. Uh-uh. The only way this evil is going to stop is if the gospel of Christ is preached to the world. And people in America, this is a God-fearing nation, I hope, will repent of their sins like 2 Chronicles 7.14 and get on their knees and say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. My friends, you got to be able to go and tell people that Jesus Christ is Lord. Witness to them. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tell people that the Lord Jesus is coming again. They'll laugh at you. They'll, they'll mock you, scoff you. They'll say all kinds of things. But guess what? He is coming no matter what. Amen. He is coming. So for me is to live as Christ. And I want to do everything I can, regardless if the world hates me because I'm his follower. Hey, guess what? Jesus said they would. The apostles said they would. Peter, if you read the first epistle and the second epistle of Peter, you'll hear the same things or read the same things. You must be holy in these last days, my friend, and gird yourself up for battle. Get your minds ready. Get your spirit ready because the Lord is coming soon. Let me close by saying this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got excited. You can listen to my long version of this on sharing the word. Ah, I can't wait. Watch that again. You can watch it on Galilee TV, on this YouTube channel. You can watch it on the Now Network. You can listen to all my sermons on television as well as audio podcasts. But here's the good news. I'm going to give you good news before we close. When the Holy Spirit is in you, he'll comfort you. He'll comfort you. He'll remind you. He'll give you instructions. The Holy Spirit gives me, for me, encouragement even when I get discouraged. I do get discouraged as a prophet, as a preacher of the word. I do. Because I'm telling the world, here's what's happening. And people won't repent. That's discouragement. But then I get encouraged because of his promise that he's coming again. So what I'm telling you, and as we close, and I'm going to pray too, and say, Lord God, give us all strength today because this is getting tough. But if we know that we have this living hope, because we live in him, the living hope that he's coming, the things that are going on in this world, as they do, will pass away. The Bible tells us to hang in there, to endure during these final hours. Endure. Hang on. The Ukrainians taught us a lot. Russia's coming in, trying to take over their territory, their country. The Ukrainians fought. If you're hanging on to what you believe, you fight for it. If you hang on to what you believe, you'll fight for it. And I believe, listen to me, I believe, oh, praise the Lord. I believe Jesus is coming again. And here's the thing. He's only coming for those who are waiting for his return. I believe he's coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's coming. I can't wait. Oh, in the twinkle of an eye. Whoop. There I am. I'm with him. In the grave? Hey, if I'm in the grave, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are left will be caught in the air to be with the Lord. Hang on to that living hope. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, give your people that living hope. Give them encouragement. Let them know that whatever's going on in the world today, you're coming again because the signs of your times are here, Lord. As we read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and the epistles of Paul and Peter all tell us, remind us, your return is near. Oh, Lord God, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to be with you. This is my prayer for all that are listening and watching this message. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, my friends, thank you for the extra time. Catch me on the extended version on sharing the word. May God bless you. Join me again on another episode of Take 5. Hallelujah.